Introducing Mr. Smelly's Fragrance Reviews with the international leader of the worldwide fragrance community, Mr. Smelly 1977. <laughs> Hello guys, and we're live, live on YouTube, guys. Hello to people watching, a couple of people watching backstage on TikTok. Join in now. We're live now on the YouTube. Go over there, subscribe to me, and join me. Say hello. I'm here from the TikTok stream, and we're welcoming our TikTok viewers here as well to the chat. Hello, guys. Hit that thumbs up button. How are you people in the room? Let me say a big hello. We're Classic Fragrance Lounge tonight. Tonight, we're talking about the top 10 fragrances released in the 1960s. I'm going to tell you a few of mine. Then we've got some amazing panelists, expert people from all around the world who are going to tell us all about it so tiktok people if you're watching head on over to the chat there i'd love to see someone in the chat say i'm heading over for, i'm here from the tiktok we welcome you to the community matt corns good evening mr smelly great to see you in the chat there matt hello to dimitris uh Savetstas. hi dan keith richards of the rolling stones was wearing habit rouge edt he did indeed like that one you're absolutely right there's the legend that is al manzano in the chat there and he says fragrances of the 60s has to be, he said, well, he says, Brute, Brute by Fabergé. Yeah, great release. I think 65, 1965. Hey, hello, chat. Been waiting all week for the stream. Yeah, uh, I'm just, by the way, I'm just bringing guests from 6.15 p.m. on there. So uh, if you're backstage now, I'm, I'm not bringing guests until quarter past the hour. Uh, watch, uh, great to see you backstage. Uh, watch Sense New York 21. Hello, chat. Been waiting all week for a stream. Great to see you in the, the, um, the chat there. Thank you so much. Watch Sense NY. Really good to see you there. And uh, we we also have Bravo, Mr. Smelly, the 60s. Wow, in that time, I wasn't yet the dirty thought of my father, even. Dusan Nenich. Yeah, even I wasn't then. How about that? Thank you for the uh, the comment there. We've got 32 people in the room. Let's hit that thumbs up button. Let's see how we're doing on the thumbs up. We've got 18 thumbs up. So let's get that over the 50 mark as soon as we possibly can, guys, and keep those thumbs up coming in. Guys, if you're watching on uh, if you're watching on TikTok, head on over to the fantastic YouTube stream. Uh, we've got Julian Arnest there in the chat. He wants to see Al Manzano in the stream. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, I'm just going to, I just to let guests know, I'm bringing guests in apart from quarter past the hour. So in 25 minutes time, if you're backstage, that's fine. But uh, I, I'm only bringing guests in after that. Uh, Al Manzano has to hop on. It's demands Julian Arnes. It's not for me to demand that he hops on. Uh, maybe we'll see him on the show one day. Vule Vu, great to see you here in the chat. Thank you so much for the thumbs up message and the uh, Mr. Smelly, your late message. Thank you so much. Uh, Kevin Chunk's coming in with a great thought there, actually. I'm the senior advisor here, so let's keep everything decent. Quite right, too. I'm glad to see that that thought there being put forward. Thank you so much. And uh, indeed, there, Andre Petre, great to see you in the chat there. He says, quorum is okay because it's cheap, but Polo Green at the current formulation is crap yet again is the way to go there's an opinion for you i don't care for quorum that much uh here we go great to see you in the chat there Dwayne. Ja dan have a great stream see you tomorrow great to have you there uh Dwayne from the uh the chat there Dwayne also says the sexiest scent from the 60s has to be bush musk i don't know what that is but thank you so much uh thank you so much 16 minutes late what a total piss take says kevin chunks in uh the chat there here we go no female guests then if dan is late opines yoshi yoshi i might just surprise you there yoshi you might not be right there here we go mr smelly's old rockers fragrance community says dimitri savestas thank you so much guys hit us with the first super chat of the night if you want to hit a super chat then uh, that would be a great way to get the uh, the chat going there so a little bit of uh, behind the scenes stuff that i'm going to talk about before we get into the main topic for tonight so we're talking about tonight the main greatest fragrances of the 1960s and i've got some absolute bangers for you. Just got to grab one thing that I need to tell you about. Hello to you guys in the chat. Great to see you in the chat there, Yoshi. Grab this.
Ah, there it is. I did grab it. Okay, guys, 42 people in the room. Hit that thumbs up button. Great to see you guys here. Hit the thumbs up. Let's uh, let's get things going. Let's get the party started. Hit me with a super chat, guys, if you've got a question. Um, we've got a great question here from Yoshi Yoshi. A comment from Andre Petre says, Chanel Pomachor and Givenchy, Monsieur de Givenchy, released in the 50s. They were. So they would have been great choices to wear that I'm sure many men did in the 60s, but uh, they won't officially qualify. Guys, let's hit that thumbs up button. We have thumbs up uh, coming in there. 26 thumbs up. And um, let's get that number over 50 if we can possibly do that, guys. Moo bad, double quack. Double quack, says Kevin Chunks. I completely agree with you on that thought there. And we've also got Yoshi Yoshi. Uh, it was more heavily promoted for each gender in the 60s. Yeah, things were more genderized, I guess, back then. Um, and perfumes still mainly are the de designer ones. Uh, very much are still that way. So, um, yeah, just, to, uh, just if any guests are backstage here, I'm going to be bringing people in from quarter past the hour. Uh, but until that, it's just going to be me for a bit. So uh, great to see people backstage. But uh, yeah, I hope you don't don't mind hanging on a bit because I have to do my little preamble here. So guys, um, we're going to just have a look at who else is there in the chat there. So we've got Tony Easy. We've got, uh, hey, Dan, hello to Tony Easy. Great to see you in the chat. I haven't seen you for a while. Guys, hit that super chat button. Let's get the first super chat of the night rolling in and see how we do. We talk about fragrances. The great fragrances of the 1960s. What do you think about 1960s fragrances? Don't forget, uh, a comment in the chat is great, but a super chat is even better. Na, 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 na. Baby, super chat, super chat, baby, super chat. Na, 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 na. Baby, super chat, super chat, baby, super chat. Let's bring in some super chats. Let's get this thing happening. Super chat, baby. <laughs> super chat, let's get this on, baby. Guys, I've got to tell you one thing. Uh, if you want to get Shipra Fulminare, my new fragrance is now released here in the UK. Shipra Fulminare. You can only buy it in the UK. Shipra fragrance starting up with open. Have I listed all the notes properly yet? Let me see. Uh, it's got an amazing note listing, actually, but I need to write it down to remember it still. So you've got top notes of lemon, lime, and ylang lang, orange as well. Uh, mid notes, you've got pepper, incense, and leather. And our base notes there, vetiver, oak, moss, labdanum, castorium, and ambergris. So this is an incredible Shipra fragrance, a leathery, spicy take on the genre something unique from perfumer john stephen and it, it just really hangs on to that fresh opening actually really really long and really powerfully and then it has this unique kind of mixture of vetiver spice and a leatheriness that comes from castorium and some other accords that he's used with great skill so he sent us four or five different permutations this was the one that we liked the best in the end it is a stunning creation there's a little bit of an old school vibe but not dated i would say uh it but it does have that classic sheepra kind of green bitterness and the subtle, subtle mystique of incense, which is another key, that labdanum is a key feature, and that undertone of green mossiness. A fantastic release. So go and get it. If you're in the UK, Shipra Fulminare, now available on NortonandWilson.com, and it's only £95 posted. By the way, if you're elsewhere in the world, we also have an amazing special offer, which we're still running for you guys, which is on Gravitas Purom and or Bon Viver, and we've got 30% off either one of those, Gravitas and or Bon Viver, whether in the United States, Canada, or the UK, which is the places we have it so far, 30% off. That won't be running very much longer. Don't, don't miss out. And we've got another, one last thing. I don't like to go on about selling things, but if you do want to get Shipra Fulminare with Gravitas in the UK, we're offering that for an, in, a ridiculous something. It must have been a typo. £120 posted. So don't forget to head on over to NortonandWilson.com if you want to buy that. I'll put the link down there in the description of the video. And we're going to have a very interesting show tonight because we're going to talk about the 1960s. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit about that decade. What do you think about the 1960s? Were you there? Well, let's find out, guys. Uh, link there for the Norton and Wilson is down there. Let's say hello to a couple of new people. Daniel Funky Cold Medina says, Kevin Chunks, thank you so much. And we also have the fantastic Matthew Pickard, a first new time chatter. Hey, Smelly, first live stream. USA here. Great to see you in the chat, Matthew Picard. Fantastic. What fragrances were popular with mods in the 1960s? I don't know. Great question. Who knows? But they like to look after themselves and probably like to smell good, I would imagine, because they like to dress well, didn't they? Um, Dimitri Savestas says... Uh, Safestas, 1966 Eau Sauvage. It's got to be mentioned. I'll tell you now that it, that is my scent of the night. Eau Sauvage, 1966 is my fragrance of the night. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring guests in if you're backstage. Thanks for being here. I'm bringing guests in from quarter past the hour onwards. 
Okay, and I'm just going to talk a little bit on my own first. So I'm going to tell you my fragrances first, and then I'm going to just host for the other guys to do it. And I'm going to see how that goes. But before we get into that, just a couple of things, guys. Great to see 58 people here. Hit that thumbs up button. Let's get those thumbs up over 50. We've got 29. Do we see 30? Can we see 30 in the back of the room? Uh, please, let's hit that thumbs up button. Yes, thank you. 30. Let's get it over 30. Let's, I'm going to come back to two minutes. Let's get this over 50. Let's work on this together. It helps us to bring in new people to the show, guys. 57 people in the room. Let's get it over 100 viewing. We've got Watch Sense New York 21 with a $2 super chat. Thank you. And uh, by the way, if you're watching on TikTok, head on over to the YouTube channel to watch this live properly. The, his question there, thank you for the $2 super chat. Really appreciate that. How is the longevity of Fulminare? Thanks. It's. Uh, I think this is probably the, the most potent of our releases so far. It lasts a very long time on my skin. I really got, I went, you know, went to sleep having sprayed it sometime in the afternoon, woke up the next morning. Still a really, really nice, lovely dry down on the skin. So I find it to be very, very long lasting. These things can be terribly subjective, so I can't measure it in hours or minutes or feet or inches. I think it's a good one in terms of that. It's 20% concentration. That's an eau de parfum. Okay, but thank you for the great question and the generous um, super chat. Really appreciate that. We've also got Sillage Gem Pepper with Aramis Wins. Next topic, hashtag Team Aramis. Yeah, great fragrance, Aramis. Let's see if it comes up. It's surely going to be mentioned, isn't it? Here we go. Um, and we have a great co comment here from Harvard and Clarkson email. He says, I bought some Fahrenheit orange and pencil sharpener. Spent a fortune, didn't like it. Should have gone... Savage, yeah, orange and pencil sharp. Now, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah, woody, woody, woody and orangey. And uh, yeah, so thank you, Watch Sense, for the generous super chat there. John McAnally with a $5 super chat. Really enjoy your content, Dan. Happy holidays. Thank you very much for the generous super chat. I really appreciate that, John. Very kind of you with a $5 super chat. Let's keep those coming in. Let's check on the old thumbs up number there. And thumbs up so far. We have 35 thumbs up. Let's keep those thumbs up uh, coming in there, people. They really help the stream reach a new audience. Just 15 more. We can get it over 50, and that'll bring in probably some new viewers for us, which is always good. Good to see some new faces in the chat. There's 62 people watching, and um, we have now a couple of super chats in the bank too, which is always good with a five dollar super chat. Thank you, John McAnally. So, oh, let me get into it quickly. Then the 60s, of course, an incredible decade. Most decades are incredible in their own ways. There's always a lot going on in the world. The 60s, though, really was a tumultuous decade for humanity. Uh, we, culturally, things really changed a lot when you go into the early 60s. We were still kind of coming out of the immediate post-war era. People still thought Elvis Presley was exciting. We had the rubbish version of Elvis Presley in the UK was Cliff Richard. Uh, and so it was kind of, you know, a, a, a much more square world than the one we'll be looking at by the late 60s. We also had things like the, uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962 when um, Kennedy went head-to-head -head with Khrushchev over some missiles being sent to Cuba and hidden under palm trees. And the Americans weren't too happy about that. It almost kicked off. We almost all got frazzled. But luckily, uh, they managed to pull back from the brink and humanity was allowed to continue, at least for a few more decades. And we're still here. So that was one thing that happened. Then the Vietnam War came along later, which was a huge thing and became a, a big issue for people in America protesting against it. Culturally, things moved along massively. We had the Beatles er 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 erupted, exploded in the UK. The so-called British invasion happened of, of bands uh, coming into the the, uh, the the into the American doing well there in the mid 60s and then after that you know we had the hippie thing kind of took off and um, it was kind of a little bit tied in with the peace movement the anti-war movement the anti-vietnam war movement and um, we got a, a very much a flowering of popular culture with incredible musicians coming along we had people like the Beatles the Rolling Stones from England we had uh, Jimi Hendrix we had all kinds of different kinds of music being developed and of course drugs became a big thing a lot of people taking drugs even the sort of you know dr drugs no longer was uh, something that a hopeless down and out junkie took, but it was the, 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 the sort of um, hipsters and normal people were smoking uh, dope and taking acid and all kinds of things. And it really influenced popular culture and uh, fashion and the way people dress. People had all the men had long hair by the ends of the 60s and the, the clothing and stuff was all flowery and psychedelic. And of course, this probably influences to some, it's, to a little extent the smells that people liked to wear and buy in the 60s. Maybe, maybe. We've got a few other people in the chat. 64 people watching. Let's hit that thumbs up button. Great to see you guys here. Julianne DeMouth, good to see you there. Famous YouTuber. Um, likewise, the rubbish version of Elvis Cliff Richards. Fair point, though, isn't he? He was the second. He was just, ah, uh, yeah. Uh, JJ Colburn. Sorry, Cliff. Um, you, Sir Cliff. The rubbish version of Elvis Cliff Richard. He'll be joining us in about 10 minutes' time. And uh, we also had, uh, we did,
did exactly just at the very end of the 60s. We had the very first heavy metal band uh, release their first album or I think just the first one was at the end of the 60s, maybe, wasn't it? Uh, Black Sabbath and, of course, Led Zeppelin, 1969, I think, debut album. Uh, kind of, yeah, the heavier rock really became a thing. So it was a fun time to be alive, for sure. I wasn't there. My parents were, though. They didn't take drugs, so. So not everyone, don't think everyone in the 60s was a hippie and everyone was uh, taking drugs. There were still people, you know, there was still James Bond in the, the Sean Connery figure in the James Bond. They were still smartly dressed, normal people, even people like me existed. It was very, very time. So um, a, a fun time to be alive from what they tell me. And we had some great fragrance releases, guys. So the Holy Trinity, Black Sabbath, Deep Purple and Zeppelin, indeed, three of the great... Um, the great heavy rock bands of the late 60s and, and really made me flowered uh, mostly in the 70s. Tony Easy with a five pound super chat. Thank you so much indeed for the super chat. So let's get stuck into it. I'll give you my choices. Let me know your choices down there below. Also, we've got some new segments coming up on the show over the weekend. So I'm going to have some new segments. I'm, gonna, I'm much more on my, particularly on my weekend's shows. We're going to make it more like a show. So let me know what kind of, what segment do you want to see? Like we might, I think we're going to have a villain of the week, villain of the week's uh, segment on a Friday. Um, we might have a cheapy fragrance of the week. I want to have a couple of off, off topics uh, sections too. Maybe a, even a little bit of a food f uh, section, a drink section, maybe some, maybe even a wristwatch of the week section. Let me know what kind of segments and sections and guests you want to see on the weekend streams. Iron Butterfly, indeed a great American uh, band, uh, not so much talked about, but indeed I have heard of them. Uh, okay, so my, my choice is number one, it's Dior's Eau Sauvage 1966, Edmund Ruznitska, one of the classic great citrus aromatic fragrances of all time. Incredible opening with uh, bergamot, a little bit of petit grain in there. We've got vetiver. We've got some other supporting aromatic accords, rosemary, things like that. So a beautiful, fresh citrus fragrance, an absolute delight. And uh, lasts for a long time on my skin. I have the old vintage version. Mr. Smelly, are you into hats or flat caps? No, I'm not. Thank you for the question. I really appreciate the question. Um, Voulez-vous wants Martial's. Who knows? Maybe he'll drop in later. Thank you so much. Voulez-vous. Great to see you in the chat there. And a couple of opinions. Yeah, let me know what you're thinking about the bands there. Julian Arnes, Sabbath and Zeppelin are, the, are more spectacular uh, than Floyd. Yeah, I never liked Pink Floyd. I must be, um, I must be uh, honest with you, but I really actually did love Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath. But uh, Pink Floyd was a bit tri trippy for me. Uh, so we're going to bring in our guests in about 10 minutes. If you're backstage, hello, thanks for being here. I'm just I'm bringing all, all the guests in at quarter past. Um, so yeah, Eau Sauvage, definitely my first vote. If you can get the old bottle, okay, what you need is the old version where it comes in an orange package, okay? Orange package means vintage. Huge difference. I can't believe how well all the ones I've got, and I've got backup bottles, have stood up over time. I don't know why, because some citrus accords go off over time. This doesn't, I mean, if it smells slightly different to when it was really made, I don't know, but it, it smells amazing. It's fresh. It's zesty. It has floral tones. It has jasmine. It, has, it was the first fragrance, I think, or one of them to uh, heavily use hedione, uh, which is a little compound, something sort of to do with jasmine. I don't know quite how it works, but apparently it's been actually clinically proven to have an effect on the part of ladies' brains, which is responsible for sexual attraction. How about that? Uh, but a really, really great fragrance. Steve McQueen's favorite fragrance, his signature scent, and an absolute stunner. If you can find a vintage bottle of this, don't hesitate. Other people may also have selected this, my guests, but I'll ask them, uh, and it doesn't matter if we double up. I don't care. We'll try and get a top 10 finalized. Off topic, but I love Purple Label by Ralph Lauren. Yeah, great fragrance. I've heard, but I've never tried it. $4.99 Super Chat. Really appreciate the generous Super Chat. Thank you so much. Trevor C., very kind of you. Keep those Super Chats coming in. I really appreciate them. So great Super Chat there. $4.99. Really appreciate it. Don't forget, you can buy Shipra Fulminare now in the UK. I'll drop them for NortonandWilson.com. And head over on there now if you want to get that one. It's only £95. Amazing fragrance. Very potent. Citruses, leather, spice, vetiver, oak moss, ambergris. Stunning what John Stephen has done. Could this be the best one we've released yet? It might be, guys. Okay, so moving on back to the topic in hand. I'm going to do all mine first, and then I'm just going to host my guests. That's the way I'm going to play it tonight, okay? Uh, my next choice then for you guys, and uh, I guess mine are slightly obvious. Others will have more obscure selections. I don't mind if we do really that. Habit Rouge. What do you think about Habit Rouge? I've got to tell you that Habit Rouge, even in its modern formula, is a stunning fragrance. You can get this really, really affordably online. It is, of course, from the house of Guerlain, and it was, a, I think, 65 or 1966. I think 1965. So uh, it's sort of a citrus 
oriental if you can do that okay so it's got a, a very beautiful crisp citrusy opening i think there's a neroli and bergamot and lemon in the middle very importantly on this one we have a beautiful rose accord which works in a really charming way and then you have this slightly um exotic resinous and the kind of benzoin hint of sweetness in the base the famous gerlinard gerlinard they call it is there in the undertone of habit rouge and i can tell you the modern version i've just got a 50 mil here you can pick this up for sort of 35 pounds that kind of thing really smells amazing not everyone takes to this it's a little bit unique it's a little bit you know some people don't care for it that it smells so unique. It doesn't smell like anything else. I, I can highly recommend Habit Rouge from Guerlain. Mid-60s release. That of course, you can buy vintage bottles, but you never know if it's gone off and all that. I know there's an Eau de Parfum too. I prefer the Eau de Toilette. It's got that beautiful, crisp freshness, very dapper, very dandyish. I think it's an incredible masterpiece, You know, as good as any Chanel that I own, which tend to cost more for whatever reason. These, these Guerlains you can buy affordably at your grey market discounters and i must say that's a really good thing so don't miss out on habit rouge mid 60s release I'll, I'll rattle off my next i'll save one actually but i'll do one other selection and i don't care if other guests do pick the same it's fine if we cross over it's, it's not an issue for me 71 people in the room hit the thumbs up button keep the super chats coming 41 thumbs up let's get it over the 50 while we're on air uh, or maybe over the 100 while we're on air if we can hello bilbo fraggins great to see you in the house there likewise visit hull um great band monge says visit hull not heard of monge but uh, thank you so much lovely comment there 70 people in the room great to see you here uh, here we go dan do you um do you insist on staying with the 1960s style of the boarding gentleman your brenner and kojak went for the full shave and women love them great point I'll bear that in mind. Thank you so much uh, to Julian there. Yeah, Aramis by Aramis, another mid-60s release, I think in 1965. So it's kind of citrusy and soapy to an extent, but mainly leathery and spicy and woody. Huge long note listing, a ton of aromatic ingredients, fantastic woody, leathery base. And this one has a real rugged old school feel. It is absolutely superb. I love it. Sammy Davis Jr. He used to have this one as his signature scent. And it really does have that potent old school masculinity. But there's nothing really animalic. It's not like Koros or even Antaeus where you get a little bit of funk there. It's not really funky, but it is leathery, rich, woody, spicy, and overwhelmingly authoritative. So Aramis by Aramis, for me, a great selection. Released in the mid-60s, mid very popular choice throughout the 60s and the 70s. And I can highly recommend that to anyone who wants to try out an amazing fragrance. And again, you can pick this one up for very, very uh, re remarkably affordable prices around the world. So Aramis by Aramis, highly recommended by me. We've got Dusan Ninich there, says, Scent of the Night, Lartizan, Mon Numero 10, Vintage. Not familiar with that one. Great to have our Serbian friend there, Dusan Ninich, in the chat. And uh, thank you guys with the super chats. Keep those bad boys coming. And one last thing, just to remind you guys, if you want to get Gravitas Prom and or Bon Viveurt, 30% off at the moment at the Norton and Wilson.com website, which is an absolutely fantastic offer. Won't be running much longer. I have finally decided to use my full name. No more Boz loss. As Slavin Ayanovic. Thank you, Slavin Ayanovic. Great to have you here. Boz was also great. I guess that was your nickname. I'll bring bringing in our esteemed guests in just about two minutes. And uh, here we go. Famous YouTuber. This guy smelly talks well about fragrance. Oh, that's very kind of you. Thank you so much, famous YouTuber. I appreciate it. Good evening. Scent of the day is a city rhythm, Miami. So good, so strong, says SLVTTZX. Thank you so much for the comment there. I haven't tried that one. I think I've got some city rhythms, but I haven't had a chance to try them yet. Um, Alex says, uh, Smelly, do you like the Deftones? I'm not really familiar. The, 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 the few things I've heard in passing, it wasn't exactly my cup of tea massively. I, I, I like I tended to like the kind of 80s style heavy rock music, uh, and that was more kind of 90s, slightly punk. I can't, I can't say I've, I've listened to much, but th th thanks for the question. And uh, maybe I'll, I'll check them out. Uh, actually, I probably won't, let's be honest. Um, but thank you. You know, ne never really got into them. Boz went full Bozzy. He did indeed, guys. I'm bringing our guests in in two seconds, guys. So a couple of new sections coming on the shows on Fridays and Saturdays. Let me know what you think about that. What kind of segments do you want to see on the show? I'm trying to make particularly the Saturday and, and Friday shows more structured so that we have a planned kind of uh, thing 
going on there, more smaller sections. And uh, let me know what you think about that. Any great guests you'd like to see? I'm also thinking, do you want to see people come in who know about bourbon or whiskey or people who want to know? Maybe someone comes give us a wine tasting evening. Maybe someone comes and give us a little uh, masterclass on uh, fine wristwatches and that kind of thing. Do you want to see some off-topic guests? I must say I do like to go off-topic as much as possible on the weekends. But what do you guys want? Maybe you want more um wrist watch uh, not wrist watch maybe you want more fragrance uh, content let me know i'm listening to motley crew and rat shout outs to la big hair rock yeah i like all that i must admit i guess uh yeah i guess we're just uh yeah th- th- when you like that kind of music uh, it tends to get you uh, i don't then t- t- tend to like grunge and, and nirvana and stuff because i'm more like the proper the true rock or what i would call proper rock music of the 80s i think it was more fun with the s- guitar solos that were like bling, 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 bling. i want all that um but not everyone liked it okay so let's bring our two esteemed guests in one by one so they get the uh, intro they yeah, deserve we're gonna ha- say a wild and uh, well- Hello to the one temple. Hey. Hello, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. Everything is good okay. to see you. Look at, I love the shirt, Alex. Yeah, I try to interpret uh, the 60s. Um, oh, I see. With the psychedelic tie. <clears throat> and these, uh, I have no. A real uh, 60s shirt, but this is the the closest I could get. I love it. I know. I get it. I get it. It it does have a 60s vibe. It is absolutely yeah. fantastic. I love the tie as well. Beautiful uh, color combination and uh, yeah, definitely yeah. interesting. Tie is originally a 60s tie. So oh wow! Belong okay. to my father. This is uh, a shirt I had uh, tailor made for me in the 80s. So it's not. A 60s, I love it. it. Looks like it. It does. You had it tailor made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. I bought okay. the clothes and uh, and I had it made by tailor. Fantastic. Wonderful to have you here, Alex. I'm just going to drop the link. Alex's channel there, the Perfume Temple there. The link is in the uh, the chat there, guys. Go and subscribe to Alex's ta- uh, Alex's t- channel, the Perfume Temple. Great place to find out about some of the fragrances you might not all, uh, already know about. Some unusual uh, choices there on his channel. I mean that in a good way. Italian Sink. Silk, rather, asks Andre, is that Italian silk there? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. It looks good. All right. Let's bring in our other esteemed guest here. So we have the fantastic JJ Colburn. How are you doing? Hello. Hi. Good evening. Welcome. Good evening. Welcome. Nice to see you here. So welcome to the show, JJ. Uh, how's things up there in uh, Boston? Oh, it's, it's near Boston. Like, it's, it is fast feeling like winter. We're already... Uh, yes experiencing highs in the mid to uh mid to low 30s at this point so it's getting colder yeah. hence the uh the nick cap here i'm looking a little That's bit it. more 90s than 60s uh well with my, yeah. with my flannel and the <laughs> With you my do, you do. But it's okay. <laughs> Carhartt. It's, uh, most of the heat is lost through the head, so if you keep your head warm, it's, it's very important. I, I think it's a good yeah, idea. Yeah. Great to have you here. So welcome aboard, gentlemen. Okay, well, we'll dive in without further ado then. So we're going to talk about some of the best releases from the 1960s. I've, I've already rattled through a few, uh, but I might chip in with one or two more selections. So we'll go to you guys. I think we've got Rachel K. Ung is going to be joining us first. I hope I've sent her the link. Um, so, guys, uh, let's just uh, go to Alex first with your first selection of a great fragrance released in the 60s. Go. Yeah, the, uh, that's actually my scent of the day, and I did something uh, I seldom do. That's uh, using the wool line from uh, the deodorant to the aftershave to finally the cologne, and it's brute, of course, uh, released nice. in 1968. It's the, the quintessential barbershop uh, cologne. It is green. It is very fresh. Uh, <clears throat> it's very powdery and slightly sweet in the base. Uh, I mean, it's uh, something uh, like a man uh, has knelt in the last 50 years. It's very old style, uh, as you might expect from uh, something from the late 60s. You know, if you want to smell uh, like that, uh, doesn't no better bad than this. 
great fragrance yeah um wow. i'm glad that you've picked that one i've also got a bottle so i can talk about it too eric 1946 thank you very much for the very generous three dollar super chat really appreciate that thank you eric uh that's very kind of you appreciate the super chat uh, carry on thank you yeah okay brute by fabergé then a great choice obviously released in the 60s remained very prevalent throughout the 70s 80s and still on our shelves today uh i've got a bottle of one of the many different iterations but i'd love to know your thoughts on that one jj brutes by fabergé what are your thoughts on it oh of course it should belong in the top 10 of the 60s no <laughs> doubt about it um i grew up smelling a lot of it my father would always have it on his dresser at hand for use so brute is uh is definitely um an iconic fragrance from the time period um one of the uh, most uh successful spicy fougeres and uh could be could be bought anywhere it could be bought in a drug store at the time and still can today i think it's a little bit more difficult to find an eau, eau de toilette slash lotion version in stores at least here in the states but uh it, it gets my vote for top 10 of uh of the 60s it, i mean it's going to be tough because we're, we're going to be including fragrances marketed to men and women yeah but uh, we'll see how that pans out. But at least if we were doing top 10 fragrances that were marketed to men, it would definitely be in the top 10. I think it's got to be just due to its success and uh, fame. Uh, but it's certainly, I, I, I think it's a good composition too. Uh, it's certainly distinctive and memorable. Something's happened to my plaque there. But I've got one of the many different versions, which is called the Special Reserve Cologne. The, the, stick, the thing fell off. But uh, yeah, amazing. Very soapy green unique unique fragrance i don't think it sucks at all it's a bit of a sort of has a bit of a cheesy reputation now um but no. you know you, you know it it when you smell it that. do you not think no no it doesn't no. deserve to, to be treated that way i don't think neither neither brute nor old spice at this point no. um yeah yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. they became yeah, cliches but now that they really aren't popular with the, you know, the mainstream crowd. Uh, it's it's sort of like I, I miss smelling them as often as I used to when I was younger. Yeah, so, yeah, but they no, they stood uh, they stood the test of time for a reason. Yeah. I think so. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just can just remind us, Alex, what what version is that that you got there? It didn't look like one that I'm uh, familiar with. No. The this one is the the plastic bottle. I, I um. Nice. I wanted the uh, the one with the medallion, uh, the one uh, like yeah. like you have, uh, but it was sold out in the store when I went it. But uh, I will get it uh, sooner or later. Beautiful. All right. Is that that's, is your one called a cologne? The best, uh, that's the best version. All right. Did you say cologne or, or after shave or cologne? This is cologne. Gotcha. It's confusing. Yeah, I've yeah, got this special reserve version. Ah, uh, yeah, the that's the one you can read. Yeah, which which still gives you the essence of the scent. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, yeah. just lighter, just lighter. Uh, this is just a little richer the, the special reserve cologne, which oh. you may be able to find online. They're just gonna because we're bringing Rachel in two seconds. Hello, well, great to see you backstage. There, yeah, sorry. Uh, drawn out sense says hello to Dan, Alex, JJ, Boz, Yoshi, Dunk, and Julian. Great to see you here. Hello, drawn out sense. Hope you're doing well. Also, there in the chat, we have the fantastic JL with an Australian two dollar super chat. Very generous of you. Thumbnail, thumbnail, clickbait match definitely guilty um you got to do that thank you for the generous uh, two dollar super chat really appreciate that thank you so much so let's bring in um here because of the see and this is why i do it our 29 i'm here because of the thumbnail well there you go business is business you've got to do it um okay guys let's bring in the fantastic rachel k Ung. hello how are you hi guys it's great to see you all hi great to see you again long time no see i just saw you on <laughs> tuesday night oh, uh, yes yeah that great. was great yes. it was a great stream Great to see you guys together on the stream the other day. Uh, Aram V was there also and another great stream. Go and check out the uh, the JJ Colburn channel there and I'll drop the link for Rachel's Instagram too. If you haven't already subscribed, JJ's channel link is there. J uh, Rachel, hello. How are you doing? How are things over where you are in uh, lovely America? Fantastic. Cold but good. All right. It's lovely to have you here. Uh, okay, so we're going to go around the room there and get people's choices for 60s fragrances. So Brute has a strong case for being in there. We're going to go for JJ's first selection then now. Uh, JJ, we, what have you brought to the table for us tonight? 
And I made it a point not to have my options be too obvious. I, I uh, wanted to totally feature good. not obscure ones, but ones that, um, you know, I already know that if I were to vote a top 10, there would be the Eau Sauvage and uh, the Brute and so on and so mm. forth. Uh, but um, what I want to choose first is actually a release that was composed by Bernard Shaw, who also composed uh, Aramis. This actually could be considered um, sort of a, a, a complement to Aramis. It was released in 1969, and shame on me, I didn't drop $300 like a millionaire on uh, <laughs> an older bottle of this. I'm going to be called a poser. I'm going to say that my nose is broken. So. Uh -huh. I just want to make sure that everybody uh -oh. is aware that um, I don't have an older bottle of this because I think the newer bottle is quite lovely. It is Azure from Estee Lauder. Um, this is the the newer re-release uh, that was along with its others, Cinnabar, Estee, Aliage, etc. And I actually really like this version of it. Um, so this was released in 1969. This is a very mossy, vetiver-heavy, um, green floral shipra, and you can immediately recognize um, some of the similarities with Aramis. However, what I like about this one is it has more of sort of like an atmosphere to it. You know, it has these aldehydes at a sort of a higher level. Um, the top notes, they glisten. Um, it's just herbal, foresty. Azure Ray um, is a, a wonderful selection from that, that time period. Um, and I thought that it would be good to, to give some credit where it's due. And uh, yeah, that's mine. Azure Ray. Okay, fantastic. Estee Lauder Azure Ray. And so Ooh. you're saying we can still buy this today in a modern formula? You can still buy it today. I think the argument is that maybe it's ever so slightly modernized and there may have been some adjustments necessary uh, it, it, because of some of the restrictions. It's the usual deal, but I think it's just as punchy and gorgeous. I do have like um, a sample of the older version and um, I find the older version to maybe be a little bit less accessible maybe to some folks who are new to exploring 60s and 70 cents. Um, so not to fear, don't fret. You don't have to spend 250, 300, $350 on the older bottle with the shoulders and the, the whole nine yards. I know that a lot of us can't afford to have, do that kind of collecting. This one's beautiful yeah. and you can still get it for 50. You can get it for 50, 60 bucks. Fantastic. Azure, just in case people are unfamiliar, can you just, how do we spell Azure if people Azure. are Googling? As you lay, I can type it in the chat if it hasn't already been done. Yeah. So, thank and, you. That would be yeah. that would be superb. All right, uh, as you're right, Estee Lauder, great one. Uh, one I definitely hadn't thought of at all. Wonderful, Rachel. Then it's over to you for your first selection from the swinging sixties. Well, I'll start with a traditionally masculine scent uh, since I'm nice. here with all you lovely gentlemen. I'll go with Abbey Rouge, Habit mm. Rouge by Guerlain, and. Good. Um, it's a lovely uh, kind of woody leather fragrance that's um, just fantastic. It's uh, very elegant and um, also just really, uh, for I think, very sensual for a man to wear. Very attractive. Um, very just really, I think, quite sexy um, for a man to wear. Very uh, kind of classic and refined. Um, so it has, you know, the... Uh, cit bright citrus in the opening and has rose and carnation in the heart along with sandalwood some other woods and a beautiful leather and um leather and uh, like a, a labdomen oak moss amber base it's just it's delightful fantastic selection and i think you've got a very nice vintage bottle there mm -hmm. so do you know what era yeah. that one's from could you just hold that up one more time that looks like a rarity yeah, you know, I'm not actually sure what year this is from. Um, uh, that's old, yeah. The, 
Yeah, it's an older one for sure. Here's the box. Is that helps? brilliant? Eau de Cologne. They're calling it an Eau de Cologne pour on, which is normally now they'll they'll call it an Eau de Toilette or there's Eau de Parfum. So that's really old. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, I'm very jealous. Has that stood up okay then over time then? Because you you oh, worry yes. that might have gone off. It still smells great. Yeah. Yes, it does. Um, we're really lucky here in the United States. We have um, Enchanté Perfumes, which is a lovely yes. shop run by Anuj, and he he stores everything so that everything we get from him is in just perfect condition. Um, you know, he stores everything like in a box on a concrete floor, cold storage. Um, so it is just yeah, everything is in perfect condition. Yeah, great website if you're looking for some of these uh, these gems. So that's where you bought that one, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Superb. I'll drop the link there, guys. If you want to check out a great place to get your fragrances, and particularly some of these gems uh, on Chante Perfume. So let's talk about, that's in the link, uh, in the description, the link there. Let's talk about it then, because uh, we've all got opinions on this one. So let's go to JJ and then Alex, <laughs> uh, and we'll compare bottles there. So JJ, you've got a somewhat different vintage one there, have you? Uh, we've lost your sound there. I think you muted yourself. Sorry, I've been getting into the habit almost to a fault yep. to mute myself when others are speaking. So this is a 90s version of Abel Rouge. Um, I find it to be just a little bit more musky in the dry down, but it isn't terribly different from the modern, which I still think is fantastic. Hence the fact that I have a 6.8 ounce bottle of it and... Um, I just went through a 6.8 ounce before this and uh, it's still terrific. Yeah. It is actually one of my favorites. I fell in love with it in the nineties, actually in the late nineties, when I went into, I've told this story before, I went into colonial drug, which is this pharmacy in uh, Harvard square in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And they had a, a selection of so many classic fragrances. And uh, one of the ones that I had smelled uh, I've sampled, uh, was Abbey Rouge and it was, uh, love at first sniff and, um, yeah, the rest is history. So I love it. And yeah. I can see where it would be an acquired taste for those who may be, uh, a little r reticent about having a rosier vanillic kind of, uh, fragrance. Uh, it might be a little much. Uh, I always say to people, if you appreciate, uh, Shalimar, um, then this this is the direct descendant of that. This is sort of like uh, the answer to Shalimar as marketed to men. Not exactly the same, but uh, you can see the 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 lineage in in the scent. So yeah, I lo I love Abbe Rouge. Yeah, obviously great description. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, so that red cap version, the modern one, is that is that just the eau de toilette in the modern form? Eau de toilette. I I don't yeah. really recommend the eau de parfum because it. it it is it is a modification. It it's much more mm. ambery. It doesn't have like the spirit of Abbey Rouge as I know it. The Abbey Rouge to me is all about the top notes and that progression, that development, and a little bit of that is lost with the Eau de Parfum. So I always recommend to people to to sample the Eau de Toilette. There's no difference in performance if that matters to you between the two. It's more a matter of it being two different approaches to the idea. Yep. Okay, guys. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go to Alex next for your thoughts on this classic. Love vintage. Hate habit rouge. Yes, yeah, some people don't like it. Famous YouTuber, thanks for the comment. Yeah, not everyone likes it. Uh, Yoshi Yoshi Rachel is looking at JJ's modern box. She's not. <laughs> <laughs> not, not at all. Um, <laughs> uh, Alex, what are your what are yeah. your thoughts? You've, you've obviously got it too, yeah. Yeah, I have the uh, the modern version, <clears throat> and uh, this is one uh, of my favorite uh, fragrances. Though I have to struggle a little with it because my my skin chemistry announces uh, florals a lot, especially rose and roly. So. <clears throat> This and, uh, for example, Egoist uh, become uh, on my skin very rosy fragrances. Uh, the, the rose note is, uh, is very pre prevalent, almost uh, overwhelming. So I usually spray on clothes, but uh, this is a fantastic scent, very classy, very gentlemanly. It's, it's really beautiful. 
I totally agree. Yep. So it seems overwhelmingly we all think the modern odor toilet, mine's slightly a little bit older because I think they now have a red cap or whatever, but you know, not that old. Very, very good, very, very fresh. Uh, and yet has that that contrast with the rose and the ambery undertones of oriental fragrance style. So just a wonderful contrast and mixture and very unique very very unique doesn't smell like anything else check it out but yeah you might want to get a sample from one of the many well-known my fragrance samples.com in the usa or fragrance samples uk in the uk would be great place well if you can sample it there i'm not sure if they both have it but anyway if you can get a sample of this one try it first or try it in the shops not everyone loves it i do though so great choice dapper fragrance got a got a great uh chance of getting in our list there and uh, so we'll put it on the list thank you so much officially that's rachel's choice i actually went through mine all at the beginning mostly so i'm, I'm merely just hosting you gentlemen and ladies here so that means that we're back to alex uh, for your next selection from the uh, the 60s yes uh, uh next selection is from 96 67 i think it's a uh, capucci from mm -hmm. nice Cap yes capucci. i wonder if someone would do that one yeah <laughs> and uh this is the box uh, this is the modern version uh, and this is uh, a ship but uh, more of a citrus aromatic kind of ship it's uh, similar uh, in some profile to something like uh, Armani or Purom or Acqua di Parma, uh, yeah. Colonia Classica, for example. Uh, yeah. The difference uh, is all in the dry down when uh, it becomes really musky, really slightly animalic, and uh, you, you smell uh, some, some tobacco and some leather. But in the, the opening, uh, I think, is the best part uh, because um, c nobody is going to, not everybody is going to love the, the kind of tie down, the kind of dank, uh, animalic tie down. Yeah, incredible, interesting fragrance. I've got it. I couldn't find it. I was going to pull it out. So I'm really glad that you inc included it. So Capucci Poram, I think, yeah, 1967. Yeah. Very interesting, gentlemanly style. Yeah, good, good comparison to Armani Eau Poram. If you've smelt that, it's in that ballpark. But that obviously yeah. they're all different. So I like that you've brought that one in here. Um, and we can still get that very affordably today online. Yeah, I think. It's still cheap. Unless yeah, I think it's still out there really cheaply. So you might yeah, get a great little fun cheapie to pick up. Capucci pour on. We'll go for other guests. Rachel, have you ever tried Capucci pour on? No, I haven't. It's actually on my list of things to try. I, I hear so many wonderful things about it. And especially now hearing Alex talk about it, it's I definitely need to. It's a fun one. Okay, JJ, fan of that one? Mm, yeah, yeah. I used to have a bottle like uh, Alex's, and for some reason, I found it to be really thin. However, I don't doubt that there were probably a few different runs, so probably Alex's smells fine. But when I got a bottle like that, it was so thin, so I hunted down like um, a somewhat older bottle that was in sort of like the pillar shape. Um, mm -hmm. And that, that one's really nifty. I, I think it has a great dry down to it. I love those citrusy fragrances from the 60s that have that little bit of a uh, civet bite a little a little civet growl um, yeah exactly that, that, yeah it's wonderful wonderful it's uh, the dry down uh, on my skin goes a little in the direction of uh, mitsuko yeah yeah i could see that similarity for sure interesting scent guys yeah check it out capucci pour i'm still available today uh great choice drawn out scents there lewis hello i've only smelled brute Eau Sauvage and Habit Rouge from the 60s. I'm going to learn a lot here. Uh -huh. Yeah, Exciting. exactly. We, uh, we're we very lucky to have guests who can bring us some great choices here. Uh, also good to see Al Manzano. How are you doing, Al, in the chat? Great to see you. Hop on if you want, Al. And uh, love somebody that loves Capucci. Um, hey. Yoshi Yoshi, thank you. Great comment there. And Slavan Ayanovic likes Aramis. Uh, I was mentioning from 1966. Aramis, yes, 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 indeed. Great to see you here. Fernando Soto, Dan Panel and chat. Hi, Dan. Panel, uh, panel and chat. Driving but listening. Great. Uh, hello to you from us. Uh, and uh, okay, let's keep going then, guys. So some great choices so far. So in the running so far, we've got Brute from Fabergé, Estee Lauder's Azure, Habit Rouge, Capucci Porom. I've mentioned a couple earlier, um, but uh, other guests may bring those up too. So I did mention Eau Sauvage, but it doesn't matter if anyone's picked it again. So we're back 
to JJ again, I think. And then, yeah, JJ next. Yeah, next selection. Ooh. Oh, I'm totally pulling a Dana right now. She does that. Um, this is uh, this is Bala Versailles from Jean Dupré. Released in oh. 1962, this is a civet extravaganza. We want to talk about civet. If you yeah. want to explore civet, I'll ooh, be right after you going. <laughs> Fancy Rachel with her with her, oh, her old school bottle. I actually think that some of the vi the vintage isn't even that difficult to get. I don't think it's like pretty affordable. Yeah. Um, but I just loved this bottle, and I found it for like 20 bucks. It still smells awesome. Um, it's just rosy, resinous. It, there's this simmering kind of feel to it. There's IBQ leather. So if you don't know IBQ, isobutyl quinoline leather, which is like just like that classic kind of like ashy, smoky, resinous kind of incense -y leather feel that you get from things like Bandi and Cabochard, et cetera. There's a little bit of that in it as well, but mostly amber. So this is just this, there's this musky, vanillic, ambery dry down it's this woody floral feel to it um it is a, a pretty iconic fragrance as well um fun fact michael jackson it was a signature fragrance um and uh yeah i i thought it was worthy of uh its addition on uh in in the great canon of of 60s fragrances so yeah. I think uh, I have uh, smelt uh, a similarity in a note, in the leather note, to Knizaten. Uh, indeed, yeah. There is that kind of similarity. And and Knizza 10 also does have um, vanilla or benzoin in it. So I think that you have that similarity between the two as well. But check it out. Like, I love the image on this particular. Th so there's a parfum as well. You can get it as a concentrated dab or parfum. Um, Dan, if you want to blow this yeah. up so that folks can see. Yes. Um, it's a lovely bottle, too. It's a very lovely, uh, very Victorian looking scene. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'd say maybe it actually predates Victorian. This looks like it's like. 15th century actually yeah <laughs> it's a fascinating a... little bottle yeah. design there yeah yeah, yeah. very good very, very charming good. yeah <laughs> i really must pick this one up yeah thank you for selecting that one i uh i've, I've heard of it i wasn't aware it was actually from the the 60s so i'm really glad you picked it Ch taffy j there bow of a sigh also loved by jackie uh, onassis oh, yeah, right. uh there you go um so uh, a lovely bit of history there fantastic i need to seek that one out i think it's on my hit list great selection love it and uh i guess we're now over to rachel again for your next selection i'm writing these down we're going to get a top 10 by the end guys so let's know what you think is in or out in the oh, comments nice. hit us with a super chat too all right so mine my next one is an hermes this is kalesh ah and it is a lovely leather scent uh leather with a sheep or base really um it's just uh it's elegant fantastic um i think it's at this today very very unisex i think a lot of men actually would prefer to wear this, um, perhaps mm. even more than ladies today, just with the way the fragrance landscape has changed. Um, but it's um, absolutely gorgeous. Um, lots of, you know, oak moss in the base, a um, little bit of, um, you know, a touch of civet in, in the base too, but it's just a really, you know, classy, but like iris heart um, with, uh, with some vetiver. And um, it's, yeah little citrus at the top and it's just really lovely and classic it's kalash is the word for like a carriage in french you know like a horse-drawn carriage and so it really kind of evokes like the wood and the little bits of leather um and just the kind of i guess for me the the wood notes are probably the most prominent the wood and the iris um and it's just you know that that kind of old school elegance really and it's it's just really lovely a total classic. Great selection. I think you also mentioned it when we did our recent Hermes uh, or mm -hmm. another list where it cropped up recently, French perfumes or something. Uh, absolutely <laughs> superb choice. Yeah. Uh, great selection there. And again, you get look at a lovely uh, old looking vintage bottle. A couple of super mm -hmm. chats just to catch up on there. So thank you so much, Vu Le Vu, for the nine 
dollar 99 super chat really really appreciate that generous super chat from you the delectable voulez vous rachel do you like white diamonds it is sophisticated in your is it sophisticated in your opinion great panel thank you all thank you voulez vous appreciate that generous support there rachel can you answer that one white diamonds hi voulez vous um yeah i do i do like white diamonds yes i think it was well made um and um you know, just because the, the bottle's a little silly <laughs> um, doesn't mean that the fragrance inside isn't quite well made. And Is yeah, that no. Armani? Uh, no. Liz Taylor. No, no. Oh, Liz Taylor, White Diamonds. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Don't know that one. Okay, great. Thank you very much for the generous super chat. I really appreciate that. Let's move on. One more quick super chat, guys. Thank you so much. It's the chat legend, Kai First, with a $6 Malaysian super chat. Good morning, Dan, and all wise and honorable panel. Thank you so much, Kai. First, really appreciate your generous six ringgit super chat all the way from Malaysia. Great to bring the worldwide community together here, guys. Thank you very much, Kai. Okay, guys, let's keep going then. Superb. So we've got Kalesh from Hermes. What a great list we've got so far. Bal Avespre, if I said that right, um, was a choice from JJ Capucci Porom. Thank you, Alex. Habit Rouge. Um, I think it was where we all agreed that it was a great one, but Rachel brought that one in. And Estee Lauder, Azure, uh, an off-the-wall choice there from JJ. And we also had Brute from uh, Fabergé. So uh, I guess there's – I've done them all of mine, though, actually. You know, I did all mine at the beginning. So just from me, we've had Eau Sauvage, which people – if other people have brought it, fantastic. Give your take. And I also went with Aramis by Aramis from the mid-60s. So I think we're already back around – Two, yeah. If you got, if you want to come in on any of the ones I've already mentioned, Alex, go for it. But we, it's over to you anyway. I think for your oh. next pick, there, <laughs> yes, Alex. No. Over yeah, something that uh, nobody has uh, already mentioned uh, yet. And uh, go back to speaking of unisex fragrances and back to cheapies. This is Musk by Alyssa Ashley. I oh. don't know if you can see that. Yep. Alisa Ashley Musk. Yes, Good. go ahead. Yes, this is a, a cheap drugstore fragrance. Uh, this is very soft, very floral, white floral, musky, and powdery scent, which is uh, very soft. Uh, it's a skin scent uh, almost immediately. But it smells clean. It smells really good. It's uh, it's very versatile. When you when you need something, uh, but you don't know something polarizing, something uh, bold that makes a statement, you can use this. It's uh, it's perfect. It smells wow. like uh, clean skin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Alicia yeah. Ashley Musk, great choice that I did not think of at all. Love it. Uh, do any other panelists have thoughts on that one? JJ, are you familiar? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's been a staple in drugstores for a long time, and it's uh, yeah, it, it's worth it's a, a noteworthy white musk, uh, one of the mm -hmm. first to really become successful. So uh, it gets my thumbs up. Yeah, super, Rachel. I have that one, and I also have. Um... Alyssa Ashley makes um like an ambergris um also what well, did like in the in the six in the seventies and the sixties that is just lovely it's an oil that's quite lovely yeah and I they have had, them they're fantastic she did a civet too with a with a cat's eye on it yeah. Wow. Okay, I'm just going to drop the link there in the chat for uh, Rachel's uh, channel or Instagram page, and I'll drop a couple of other people's links. Into I'm just going to do that on my phone because it's easy to do the Instagram thing on the phone. So a link there for Rachel K. Ung's Instagram. Go and uh, follow her on the Instagram, guys. And we've got somebody here says, do we, did we miss you? Alex's moustache. Alex, do you miss me? Alex, <laughs> Alex it, I forgot. No, yeah, December really. is here. You look. You do look uh, smoother today. Yeah, no mistake. Yeah, the, yeah. November is over, so I shaved the mustache, but uh, it will come back together with the goatee this time. So I will be back to my usual look in uh, about a week. Uh, all right, Val Eversai there, I'm being reminded, is by, of course, Jean Despray. So uh, that is definitely on our list. Now, you look great. I love I, 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 the, the shirt color and tie combo also. I'm loving it. Okay, guys, so great selection so far. You guys are smashing it. And we are back to JJ, then going to be Rachel again. So JJ, next one from the 1960s. Mm -hmm. 
So I have the mother of green sheepers. So green sheepers really uh, came into vogue in the 60s and would really become popular in the 70s. And this is one of the first ones that came onto the scene. This is uh, Yves Saint Laurent Y, not to be confused with the other Y that was released in the 21st century, of yes. which there's absolutely zero association. Indeed. So this one was released in 1964. It's a green, fruity Chypre. Uh, it was composed by um, uh, Michel He, who also did Calandre uh, by Paco Rabanne, which could also be mentioned uh, for a 60s lineup. And uh, also Yves de Balmain was composed by him, which was released in 1980. Both of those are green sheepers as well. Um, this is aldehydic rosy green there's like a hyacinth note i love that hyacinth that kind of like crunchy green floral wet and just sort of beaming kind of scent um, there's a peachiness a plumminess you got the droops that uh are popular in chipras um and it drives down to the lovely vetiver and civet and all other kinds of good stuff um it smells very nice and i see that rachel's a fan as well Ooh, what, what version is that? I have the Eau de Toilette. Do you have the Eau de Parfum or the Parfum? Oh, you're muted. We, we've got you muted there at the moment, Rachel. Oh, sorry. Um, I have the EDP. Yeah. The oh, nice. Parfum. Nice. Very nice. Beautiful. And JJ, what era is your bottle there? That, that's an old this, one too, oh, isn't it? Oh, goodness. This must be uh, maybe like an 80s bottle. Probably like oh, mid 80s. Yeah. Is that still in production? Um, I actually don't know if it's currently in production and I can't really speak to later versions of it. I only know of this one. This is the only one I've ever smelled. Um, I went with the Eau de Toilette because I tend to lean more towards Eau de Toilettes. Um, but yeah, I, I think it was in production as recently as like five or six years ago, maybe, maybe. they were in like those cubic bottles, I think with yeah. all the other classic oh, fragrances. Yes. Okay. And many of those have been discontinued, I think. I get the feeling they may all be yeah. uh, soon if, if they're not already yet. Okay, and do, uh, do you happen to know the year of release? Just so Nin I can write that down. 1964. 64, okay, fantastic. All right. Um, guys, do you think, obviously, the decade was a pretty tumultuous decade when style and fashion changed a lot. I don't know. And the answer to this maybe uh, didn't really affect it much. Did, did, do you think this is reflected much in the releases? Because, you know, we had the hippie era and everything. I mean, I don't massively pick up on anything that's saying, oh, yeah, you can tell that the flower power had come in by the end of the decade in terms of the fragrances. But uh, is there anything notable there? For me, I don't massively see it but in the actual smells. I think more stylish people, like with the, like sort of like a mod look when I think of these fragrances than hippies, I think That's hippies true. were using mostly like, you know, earthy oils mm -hmm. and patchouli. I, I associate yeah. that. However, if you get into the seventies, you see that influence because hippies really became a thing in the late sixties and it wouldn't yeah. really hit the mainstream until the seventies. And that's when you have yeah. sort of the green movement and a lot of the green fragrances and patchouli heavy fragrances, such as Renaissance patchouli in the early seventies. So you'll see a lot more of that uh, influence from hippie and free yeah. love culture in the seventies and fragrance. Good. Good point, of course. And of course, yeah, it, it wasn't homogenous. And yeah, many people were not hippies and there were lots of, yes, modish, smart looking people too. And I, I suppose, yeah, exactly. The, the anti-culture, counterculture vibe of the the uh, the people taking all the acid and stuff, probably they weren't that interested in fragrances. Maybe, maybe. Good point. Okay. Hillary Dean with a $5 super chat. Thank you so much for the generous super chat. Really appreciate that, Hillary. Vixen, 1968. I think I may have referenced that in my thumbnail. Is a great movie from the 60s please can you kindly play the trailer in this stream for me and my wife it's a cracker thank you all thank you so much hillary dean for the generous five pound super chat i can't guarantee that i'll try okay it might be a copyright issue and it might be hard to find i will try and do it or at least a picture or something thank you i really 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 appreciate the generous super chat and i will attempt to do something to accommodate your desire there really appreciate the super chat indeed the russ meyer films were 
uh, an acquired taste. Um, yeah, this, this, yeah, yeah, iconic in a way and symbolic of the decade, no doubt about it. Okay, Anuj Patel with a very, very generous Canadian $13.99 super chat. I really, really appreciate that, Anuj. Great to see you in the chat there. Thank you. Look at this panel. Absolutely awesome. Fantastic topic. Also, the why by YSL is the re in the reformulated cubic bottle is indeed discontinued. Sad news there. We thought that might be the case. Thank you, Anuj. We love you. Great guy with amazing knowledge. Go and head over. We've already mentioned you a little bit earlier there to Enchante Perfumes if you want to get your uh, fragrances over in the United States and Canada, especially known for having some rare old ones that you can't find very <coughs> easily elsewhere. And as Rachel said, always well cared for. So you know they arrive in the best possible uh, condition. Always. As far as the, yeah which is the key for collectors. Thank you guys for the great super chats. I'll try and help you out there, uh, Hillary, with the, uh, the, Vic, the what's it called? Yeah, Vixen 90. I'll see what I can do by the end of the show for you there, Hillary, but I, I can't guarantee that immediately. But thank you so much. Uh, we have, uh, here we go. Dan, one night me and 959 lover have to come on your stream to talk about the old days of YouTube Fragcom. 100%, we need you on. Yeah, because you used to have a channel. But uh, I insist, I'm going to hit you up, actually. I'll DM you to arrange it. Uh, no excuses. Okay, guys, back to the topic in hand, then. We've got a great list. I'm not going to go mega long tonight, so I'm going to look to sort of get, you know, before too long, I want to be zeroing in on a top 10 and sort of close this down without too too much further ado. So we've got a really nice list so far. I'm a bit lost. I think we must be back to Rachel. No doubt some, uh, some uh, incredibly rare vintage bottle <laughs> is about to be presented again. Here we go. Rachel. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> this one is actually a bit... Uh, a bit more common. This is a Jovan uh, honeysuckle. Ah. It's wild honeysuckle, and they made. They had a bunch of these at the time that were out, which were just these kind of uh, single note, you know, maybe drugstore bottles, but they were really pretty. Um, mm. And you can still find them, especially like on eBay and around for really nothing. Um, but they're they're really pretty. They're really nice, and so I would definitely recommend if you find some of these old Jovan, like honeysuckle and a bunch of other florals, etc. They're just they're they're well made and they're they're I think they're quite lovely. I think there's a gardenia one as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, yeah. 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 I love it. Okay. Yeah, some of these Jovans are really popular and so that was sorry, what's the name of that one? Wild honeysuckle. Wild honeysuckle. Can we still buy that one? I don't think it's made anymore, but there's just tons of them on eBay for okay. very like I think I got this bottle for maybe ten dollars. Do you happen to know the year of release of that one? Uh, I looked it up. It's definitely in the 60s, but I think I started looking something else up. No, I All don't right. remember. I'm sorry. Don't but stress. No problem. Up. Great choice. It's nice. To, what, what we get here, obviously, we discussed, we're uh, talking about some obvious classics like Old Sauvage and Habit Rouge, but I, I hope the audience gets a chance here to discover new ones like that. Hilary Dean, I found that, and I will, but stay tuned to the end. I will play that as our outro, the Vixen uh, thing will be played at the outro of the show. Okay, so thank you for the generous super chat. I try and accommodate requests where possible. And yeah, I'd absolutely love you to have you on Vule Vu there. Let's talk about it. And uh, yeah, we, we're always looking for new guests on the channel there. Oh my God, Rachel, you're my hero. She must like that fragrance. Thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, here we go. Vule Vu with $9.99 super chat. Um, mm -hmm. Rachel, I love it. You have an impressive collection. Where did you obtain that? Great question, Rachel. Well most, Thank you, Voulez Vu, for the super chat. Most of my vintage uh, bottles I obtained obtained uh, through Anuj. So I definitely highly recommend that you contact Anuj at enchanteperfumes.com or just in the chat. I, Anuj is probably in the chat yep. right now. You could just like talk to him directly. He's amazing. Uh, he knows how to find uh, really high quality bottles that haven't gone off, which is, you know, because you just randomly buy things on eBay, which I do too. I, I buy things on eBay. I buy things on Etsy. There's a there's actually a great Etsy shop that I really love um, called Parfum de Paris. Uh, but, you know, we all have places that we go. Um, but Anuj is so great because it's 100% reliable mm. that the pre mm. perfumes you get from Anuj have been stored well and haven't gone off. Um, and that's just, you really, it's difficult to find because you just never know like I'm more worried about storage from some random person who maybe had a bottle in their right. grandmother's bathroom for 50 <clears throat> years than I am mm. than I am about fakes or anything like that. Um, right, you know, right. Not everyone knows how to store perfume. 
Yep, great site to go to, and I've dropped the link there in the chat, so go and head on over. Yeah, they, um, yeah, they, they are really good. As you say, yeah, I've, I, most of my vintage purchases have been good, but a, a very significant proportion haven't. So, yeah, if you, if, if that's if you go on eBay or take your chance in, in, in the, the, out there in the Wild West. So, yeah, uh, it is worth looking at a site like that where they have been, uh, what's the word, curated, I guess, curated, uh, and he, he's checked them out before you have to take the risk. Okay, so super, super choices, and we're back around to alex now for your next selection over there our man in trieste by the way alex loving have you got a new camera and mic you look super hd no uh oh. it's the usual uh, webcam and my usual uh, microphone love it okay maybe it's just the brightness of your shirt makes you look hd but uh you, you look like super high quality uh, and i love uh, that's a, i don't think i've had you on with that microphone before the mic's good yeah, yeah, it's the uh, it's the one uh, that I bought and uh, we test uh, together on a private stream. Oh remember. yeah, okay. Maybe I just it wasn't in camera, so it wasn't on shot so much. I love it. Sounds well, probably really it's the different uh, different positioning of the of the lights that may. Yeah, look yeah, I like it. Better. I like it. I like it. Okay, uh, Alex, next selection from yeah, the next... decade that shook the world. Yeah, next selection you already mentioned, but uh, it no could be left uh, out. It's Aramis. Exactly. Aramis, Aramis the, the classic one. Uh, and yeah. uh, sometimes uh, I forget how enormous <laughs> this, this fragrance is. It's, uh, it's really big. It's really bold, polarizing. It's uh, a lot of everything, a lot of Acmos, a lot of Cetuses. A lot of leather, tobacco. It's great. It's it smells so good still today. I love, I use it uh, a lot of this uh, to the eighties and the nineties, and uh, I still love it. I still I think it's uh, maybe dated, but I don't give a damn. I love it. Yeah, it. great. Great choice. Aramis, the uh, it was originally just called Aramis Eau de Cologne. Nowadays, it will say Aramis Eau de Toilette. I have a modern version, which I think still, and I used to have a vintage bottle, and there wasn't a lot of difference. So it's really held up with the, the modern reformulation. Beautiful, but yes, dated, um, but it hasn't suffered, I don't think maybe too much from the reformulation what do other guests think about not everyone likes this i know you smells good eugene's not a fan uh i'll go to jj i wonder what you think of aramis the original of course i love it i grew up with that too my dad had that and uh yeah naturally you know with uh, i mean I, sh I shared azure earlier so i love that that style anyhow you know i i see a lot of cabochard in it um yeah, yeah, I think it's it's wonderful. It's it's definitely a classic, and once again, top ten material for the '60s. It's Number kind of two. one of those that's got a real strong. It's, it's probably going to get in there, isn't it? Yeah, because it's so yeah. iconic and it stood yeah. the test. Well, it's still popular, or still at least out there. Um, I wonder if its market is literally dying out, so it may disappear from our shelves. I don't. I don't mean that in a, a macabre way, but it, it certainly languishes on the lower shelves of our mm -hmm. department stores, somewhat unloved um uh, but you can yeah you can pick it up crazy prices online if you get it in the department store here it's sort of really expensive like 70 pounds or something uh but then you go online it's sort of 25 pounds so don't miss it if you're a connoisseur of old school frags it's kind of an essential have even if it may not be your favorite ever hello lovely chat basic malaco he's going to be on uh, tomorrow night from ecuador a man in ecuador and uh, a great part of the community got some spicy things lined up for the weekend shows looking forward to seeing you guys and hopefully even some of our panelists here then let me just do a little bit more uh, link dropping so we have a spectacular panel and i'm very privileged that these ladies and gentlemen give their time out of the goodness of their hearts um we're going to just drop a couple of links there i've been dropping uh jj's a little bit i guess about i think i'm going to drop alex's uh the perfume temple channel fantastic channel there 226 subscribers deserves more very hard when you're a smaller channel to get the traction, isn't it? It's really hard. I mean, God knows I'm supposed to be a bigger one. Even I don't, you know, it's, it's very hard to get more people to discover the channel. So we do uh, the, the small amount that we can here to drop links. Go over there, subscribe right now. Fantastic channel. Unique takes an in-depth analysis on fragrances. And a man with a, a great history of, I mean, you, you were into fragrances a bit, weren't you, Alex, before the online world really took off you were you were still loving fragrances back in the 90s and maybe even when you were young in the 80s 
yeah, uh, yeah. as a big part of your life, right? Yeah, I started uh, using and collecting uh, fragrances uh, around uh, 1985, 1986. Yeah. Amazing. That is what we love. Okay, so we've got some real aficionados here. So go and subscribe to him and uh, let's get those numbers up. Likewise, we're going to go to our next guest. Uh, well, Rachel's next but one. So it's going to be JJ, actually, which is perfect because I'm now going to drop the link to the JJ Colburn channel again. Uh, as with Alex, a channel where you do hear about a lot of fragrances that are a little bit off the beaten track. You can discover something new. And I think that's something really valuable in a channel. If you, you know, uh, obviously a lot of the big channels are, can be fun, but um, you maybe don't discover anything too new if you've been into the hobby for a while. So JJ's channel there, head on over there, unique way of uh, presenting the fragrances. There's the link. And we'll go to you, JJ, then. So we're up to 90 people in the room. Hit the thumbs up if you're watching. The thumbs up really help us as well. Get that thumbs up over the 100 mark for the show. JJ, next selection from the 60s, please. Disclaimer, this uh -oh. one is long discontinued. Um, this has been gone for a long time, um, oh, wow. sadly. But uh, this is Monsieur Lavant uh, from 1964. And this is uh, a green sheep rug, sort of taking, uh, following the lead of YSLY, but marketed to men. And uh, there's, it's lemony and spicy and powdery and herbal at the top. And then it dries into this carnation and clary sage. Um, the real showstopper though is there's this jasmine note which is which is really unusual at the time for men and it's it, it is really evident in um the heart of this fragrance and then naturally because it was commonplace you had civet in the dry down it doesn't smell pissy it doesn't smell poopy there is this belief that civet um is really that raunchy, but it isn't necessarily. It it, it exalts all the other elements. Um, it creates a plushness to a fragrance, and uh, and then there's these nitro musks, those long outlawed <laughs> nitro musks in the base, and these leathery undertones as well. Um, just a, just a really gorgeous one. Unfortunately, it is kind of difficult to find. Um, but I just wanted to share it because it's it's just a brilliant one. So um, I'd recommend, uh, you know, maybe hitting up Anuj. I don't know if Anuj might have some of these kicking around. Or if you do like an eBay search, do a save search for it. Save your search for Monsieur Lanvin. And uh, perhaps it will come up for uh, a reasonable price that will be accessible. Guys, Monsieur Lanvin, great description there. So nitro musks, apparently forbidden. What are they, JJ, and why are they forbidden? I've heard of them. So nitro musks were things like musk ketone, musk ambrette. They were the musks that were used in perfumery from the 1930s all the way through the 1980s. They were heavily restricted by the 1980s, and they're all but completely restricted, save for the allowance of, I think, like a half a percent of mosquitoan maybe these days, maybe even mm -hmm. less. And it was learned that they were possible, at, you know, endocrine disruptors. Um, there are some issues that are the potential issues with having uh, repeated exposure to them. Um, so we don't really experience them in fragrance. That's when people talk so much about oak moss, I think what they're actually paying attention to, what they notice even more so is the absence of nitro musks when they're smelling a lot of vintages because mm -hmm. that really shifted things. Um, and uh, the perfume uh, the perfume producers had to innovate as far as doing replacements. And those replacements couldn't quite 100% uh, match what those effects uh, could uh, impart in a fragrance. Right. Okay. And do, the, in terms of the smell, I mean, were they mainly, uh, obviously, I think they had a fixative role, did they? To some a, extent? Considerable, uh, uh, considerable yeah. fixative role, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> role and uh, a really formidable fixative role as well. Uh, which is why you may find that a lot of older fragrances do linger 
uh, a long mm. time on the skin because of the capacity for these nitro musks to really fix the scent. Love it. Okay, great to see you in the chat there, uh, Marcel's Blends. Uh, hola, gorgeous chat family. Great to see you, Marcel. Hope we'll be seeing you on the show over the weekend. Uh, and just to say hello to a couple more people on the chat there, guys. Good to see you, Daniel Medina. Lovely to have you here. Likewise, always good to see Mr. Malarco, Basic Malarco. And we'll scroll down there, guys. So, yeah, don't forget, you can hit us with a super chat if you want to get uh, influence the conversation. And then we're going to go to Rachel after this brief message. <laughs> Bring in some super chats, let's get this thing happening. Super chat, baby. <laughs> super chat, let's get this on, baby. Hit us up with your question, influence the conversation. Rachel KNG, uh, what have you got lined up for us next? So, actually, Dan, I had a quick question. I have Go for two, it. I have two more bottles that mm. I would really love to share. Do you mm. think we'll have two more rounds, or should I? Yeah, sure. we'll go. Yeah, I think about t t two more each is about right. Yeah. Okay. That's perfect. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's good to know. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, what's the first one? All right. So the first one, the bottle has some damage on it that my son did. But um, this is Creed, Eresia. 1968 it's a beautiful it's actually a creed that people don't talk about yeah often, but it's one of my favorite fragrances of all time and it's probably my favorite creed um and it's just a beautiful beautiful iris sheep um it's just classic stunning every single thing is perfection um in this in this iris sheep um it's like the, the platonic ideal <laughs> of what an iris sheep should be and i adore it and it's you know, because it's not one of those super hyped up, like, you know, um, uh, batch bro fragrances. You can still find mm. it every once in a while for a very reasonable price. And it's it's just gorgeous. It's so lovely. Okay. I'm very intrigued now. So it's called Eresia. Eresia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, how do we spell that? It's I-R-I-S-I-A. Okay. Interesting. Okay. D d is that iris heavy or am I completely off? Oh, yes. Is that nothing? No. It is to do with Iris. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what I'm th uh, a little bit intrigued by then because I did a big interview about a year ago with the guy who wrote the book, uh, the, this, the um, Ghost Perfumer, about mm -hmm. Creed and their secret mm -hmm. history. And he kind of said, well, to all, to all intents and purposes, the, pr the modern history of Creed only began in the 80s and there was almost nothing of worth or note be before that. But what you're saying somewhat goes against that. Well, that, I mean, this, if... Uh, Profumo yeah. is correct. It's 1968. Okay, there you and go. They fantastic. Could be wrong. You know, uh, no, I'm going with what you've said there. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, it just uh, yeah. So that's an interesting one, and uh, obviously that, that's no longer in their official lineup anymore. No longer produced, but we can right. still find one knocking about. And yeah. as you say, it's it's not quite the same as uh, certain Creed. You know, Green Valley by Creed is is ridiculously right. expensive and has probably gone off as well if you find it. So that could be one to look out for. Thank you. Great choice, to Creed Erisia. Maybe they um, do have a heritage from the '60s. JJ, do you mind if I interrupt here? So we have a little bit of a discussion going on in the chat yes. Yes, uh, I just I want to I just want to clear the air here yeah. so I want to let you know um, to a couple of the gentlemen or, or ladies or I, I don't want to assume either way um, I'm I'm I can I can't speak for Rachel or for Alex or for Dan but I'm the last person who thinks that vintages are inherently superior. <laughs> yeah. Like you're talking about the wrong person. If you're referring to me, I mean, like I'm assuming Alex and Rachel feel the same way. Like Correct. I already know that there is inevitable degradation in fragrances. Mm -hmm. I already know that what you're smelling when you have an older bottle is not exactly as mm -hmm. it smelled. And it's it's important not to collapse that context when you're analyzing, observing fragrance, or writing about it, which I've written a lot about of it, uh, about uh, about it as well. And I'm also a student of perfumery as well. I studied perfume for five years, so I just want to be clear: we're not Johnny Come Latelys. I think we've been enthusiastic about fragrance for a very long time. So I just uh, just wanted to clear the air on that and uh, just continue enjoying the live stream. Yeah, and we. We are actually fighting a battle uh, to dissuade people from uh, spending big money 
on vintages, on vintage bottles that could have gone off. Right. When, right. Uh, the, when the, uh, the current formulation is perfectly acceptable. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, no, and, none of us... Yeah, it, it, none of us yeah. are hardliners about having to get vintage. Or not hardliners at all. Yeah, I actually yeah. frown on vintage snobbery because yeah. it, it, it also there's there's some classes issues with vintage snobbery too because it isn't an accessible hobby. You know that's why you know that's why in fact a couple of the ones that I've shared are actually new formulations. Um, yeah. So I don't know where this dialogue is coming from, but you can stick around and you can enjoy the live stream and just, you know, just take it with a grain of salt. But, you know, try to try to come from, you know, not so cynical a place and just uh, roll with it. And if you don't like this, you can always just shut it off and do something else and enjoy your own fragrances. There you go, guys. Uh, okay, so yeah, great, great point there from JJ. Uh, absolutely. So I'll uh, just scroll down the chat there. Keep the comments coming in there, guys. Okay, so um, we have some wonderful choices so far. I think we were back to Alex, I think, next. But probably no more than one or two each. I'm going to yeah. try and uh, I got a little bit of uh, I need to get off before I get too late tonight. So Alex, we could easily do two shows, I'm sure, on the 60s. What's next for, for us? from you well i saved the best for last if you know me you know this fragrance will top every list i will ever do au sauvage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. au sauvage is the number one of the 60s uh, in my opinion and not only mine i think speaking of fragrances that uh, might have lost something uh, the current formulation has lost something but the current formulation is still a wonderful fragrance, a perfectly acceptable one. It doesn't have uh, the Okmos kick in the dry down that this one has. But, uh, you know, that's uh, one of the best fragrances ever made. It's the Citus Aromatic reference point ever. This uh, is one of uh, many Edmond Rudnitska masterpieces. And uh, I, you can uh, also uh, check out the feminine version of this. It's called Diorella, always by Rudniska. It can be considered uh, more or less the, the, the feminine version of Osuvage. Osuvage was my dad's signature scent. I've never seen him uh, wearing anything else. Uh, so. It has a particular uh, sentimental value for me. and uh, But I think uh, no one can deny it's probably the most relevant uh, fragrance of the 60s. Stunning creation. Yeah, great choice. Uh, Rachel, it looks like you... Is that Diorella that you have there? This is Diorella, yes. Yes. Um, yeah. I knew there was, a, there was a Dior made in the 60s. It turns out it's... Um, Oh, now I just blanked on it. But there wasn't was the one original Diorescence, I think, was released. No, uh, uh, but I also I just got out all my Diors, but I happened to have this on the table, and I was like, "Oh, Diorella, it's so wonderful!" Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, so was Diorella a bit earlier? Was that fifties? Uh, yeah. Okay, got you. Um, yeah. Oh, fresh. I also really like from them, but that's 1955 too. So yeah, great, great. Yeah. Check it. You know, whatever decade it's from, do check out DRL if you can. It has a great reputation as being the, the mm. twin to the amazing Eau Sauvage. Yeah. I must say everything I've got in my collection, nothing is better than Eau Sauvage. You know, the, the vintage is a little bit better. Amazing fragrance. I just got someone today. I don't know how, but it was all the bottles I've got have stood up over time. Fine. Uh, the, you know, they have that real crisp, fresh bergamot thing and just a certain magic about the balance of the green uh, aromatics, the kind of herbal tones in there and the, the vetiver and stuff in the base and that that jasmine-esque thing and the, the head and Absolutely balls, incredible fragrance. Look out for it. If you can get it in that kind of bottle, you know it's the older one. If you get the ones that are the old, the other little shape that they used to do, do with the funny little plastic cap, that also is definitely old formula if you're searching on eBay, a stunning 1966 release. Uh, so, uh, JJ, I, I assume, but I must not assume, I assume you're also a fan of Eau Sauvage. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. And Diorella. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, both used Hedion, actually. And a Hedion, I think, is what really brings out some of those, like, um, Melanie kind of qualities, too. Um, mm -hmm. It really, it, like, um, exalts and fixates mm -hmm. uh, that cantaloupe kind of feel. Yeah, yeah. Love them both. Yeah, it's very, very magical. Like fruity, definitely. The Aura a great uh, a fruity, a fruity note that yeah. uh, it's totally lacking uh, in a sauvage. Yeah, yeah on the citrus. All right, magical stuff. We've had some amazing collection uh, selections. We've got Eau Sauvage there from Dior. We've also had Fabergé's Brutes, uh, less obvious there at uh, Estee Lauder, Azure, Habit Rouge from Guerlain, the Capucci Porom, uh, Jean Despray Bell. Ev What's it? <laughs> that's it. Thank you from John Despray. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, that's <laughs> the one. Hermes Kalesh, Alisa Ashley Musk, Aramis EDT or Ar Ar Aramis by Aramis. Why for ladies from YSL 1964 release? Uh, Jovan Wild, Honeysuckle, Monsieur Lanvin, and even Creed's Irisia. It's good to get a bit of Creed in there. So I think we're back to JJ. Uh, JJ next. Yeah. Go for it. Uh, next is Santa Maria Novella Melebrano, which was released in 1965. Um, the opening is this tart, um, kind of like it reminds me of just like tart berries, but that doesn't last for very long. So Melebrano in, in, in Italian means pomegranate. So there is sort of the suggestion of like pomegranate arrows when you open it. Um, but something in this is just so sunny and winsome and, and invigorating. Um, there is a lot of mossiness in, in this. There's also hawthorn blossom. So hawthorn is a sort of anisic kind of uh, pungent kind of tree blossom, uh, which is often used in sort of leathery fragrances. And while this isn't terribly leathery, you can pick up that hawthorn. It's actually in a few other Santa Maria Novella fragrances as well that are really beautiful, like... Um, like Po de Spagna, which is this gorgeous Italian fragrance, uh, a gorgeous <laughs> leather fragrance, and also uh, Fieno, which is uh, their hay fragrance. Um, but this has also the starchy, um, cool, powdery orris as well. Um, it's just really beautiful, even in its newer version. And uh, yeah, I wanted to throw a curveball because this isn't necessarily a designer fragrance. I don't think Santa Maria Novella was ever, <laughs> it's it's sort of like a perfume house, uh, but it's great stuff. One, one of my favorites from the house. Wonderful. Uh, Melagra Melagrano, is that M-E-L? -E could you just spell that in case will, anyone needs? I will yeah. do that right now. I'll put it in the chat. Thank. I appreciate that very yeah. much. And then we're, that's really good. Love it. Some real off the wall choices, and we've covered a lot of the big ones that we would expect. Hillary Dean with a very kind five pound super chat. Really appreciate that. I haven't, I haven't forgotten your Vixen trailer either. Thank you for the, the very kind super chat. What's everyone's favorite sixties invention? For me, it's a toss up between the Wonder Bra or the smoke detector. Wow, I didn't know those were. I guess smoke detectors are well. Depends how you look at it. I was going to say they're more important, but I guess it's a matter of opinion. Thank you for the super chat. Um, that is a great comment. Uh, favorite 60s invention, Wonder Bra, Smoke Detector. Uh, I mean, I, I, for humanity, one thing, I don't know if it was invented in the 60s, but it certainly seemed to become prevalent was, if I can get a little bit more heavy, the, the invention of the, the contraceptive pill changed society in the 60s a little bit because it, it meant people could have a little bit more sexual liberation yeah. and uh, gave women a little bit contr more control over uh, their 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 uh, family planning. So that was a huge invent. I don't know if it was invented then, but it became prominent, I know. Uh, so that's one thing, but uh, some people may or may not think that's a, a good thing. I don't well, I, I, Anyway, moving on. The smoke detector, I didn't know. The Wonder Bra. Any other 60s inventions, guys? Um nothing springs to mind to me i, I, I think that woman had an easier time with their cycle because they didn't have to wear like belts like i think that rachel could probably explain that <laughs> i think that they improved those things as well yeah <laughs> like well I, let's probably not delve into that heavily but yes, <laughs> not too of, heavily <laughs> there were there were things that happened actually that genuinely helped people in in their everyday lives quite dramatically yeah. in in yeah. the 60s and uh, i think also medicine no no it was well, yeah no the, the, yeah medicine stuff that came uh, along that helped people a lot back then uh, the video that was really good Video, video oh. cassettes. 
Ooh, became, were they invented in the 60s? Okay. Um, you know, I don't know if they were invented in the 60s, but they became mm. available to local television sta stations. So for the first instances of um, broadcasts on video were in the 60s. So, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you think that that far back, obviously, everything, if you listen to music, it was, if it wasn't on the radio, it was an, on, an, an LP uh or maybe an eight track just about came out but they didn't even have cassette tapes that we used to have in the 80s and 90s they didn't even have that so it was yeah i think it was a different world guys it really was okay here we go we've got a great super chat there thank you so much for the generous 20 dollar australian super chat really appreciate that he says great show we want more clickbait there'll be plenty of it on this channel don't you worry about that off to see archie thank you jl yeah go and check out the archie channel after this archie always um always live every night of the week how he does it i don't know hats off to him he does it. he earns those super chats and great to have one there from the wristwatch community and that's a nice omega speedmaster watch there in the picture jl thank you generous 20 dollar australian super chat really appreciate it okay guys uh not everyone appreciates archie <laughs> He's in a quiet. Yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's there if you want to. I, I, I find him intriguing. Okay, guys, thank you, generous super chat. So we're not going to go for too many more. We've had some amazing choices. Uh, Rachel, back to you, and then we're going to try and zero in on our top ten. I bet, I bet you've got one more for us, though. So. Yeah. Ah, what's this? So this is Shama Shamad by Gerlo. Shamad. Yes. Nineteen sixty-nine. So Shamad was back in the times of Napoleon. Shamad was the. Uh, the term for the drum beat, the quick, fast drum beat that was sounded to call a retreat in the army. Oh. Um, and also in romance novels, it was also the term for when your heart beat so fast, when you were really smitten and really desiring someone and kind of, you know, under someone's spell. Oh, and like so it. the original, I don't have the, a vintage bottle, but the vintage bottle kind of looked like an upside down heart. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it really tried to capture this, this sense of, when your heart was beating so fast, you know, when you saw someone that you were in love with um, and that that sense of, oh, you know, that when your your senses are, are, are really uh, heightened because of like love. it. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And so Shamad is this beautiful. It's kind of a floral uh, green fragrance. Um, it's very bright. Um, it's just it's really lovely. Um, there's like hyacinth. There's galbanum. There's uh, rose and jasmine and aldehydes and lily of the valley. The base, the base has this is like balsamic, very balsamic, and has vanilla and vetiver and sandalwood. So to me, it's a really bright, lovely, like kind of green floral. Fantastic, yeah, famous ah, one JJ. from Gala. And JJ, obviously, you concur. Yes, tell us what you think about this one. Yeah, it was going to be my next one, but I'm glad that that Rachel has it. It always makes me excited that Rachel is on the same wavelength. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, lo I love Shamad. Uh, Shamad um, is a bit overlooked in, in as far as Guerlain's, uh, oddly enough. And um, I mean, she she put it best. It's just this wonderful aldehydic springtime. I love wearing this in the springtime. It's a spring green sheeper floral. It's definitely unisex. Um you could find a bottle like Rachel's. You could find like a B bottle version. I like the B bottle version as well. And uh, yeah, it's a classic. Uh, it's definitely good stuff. All right, guys, uh, seek it out if you haven't tried it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, here we go. We've got a super chat here. Voulez vu with the one dollar ninety nine super chat. Bottles in the air. Wave <laughs> them like wave them like you do not care. Thank hey, you for the generous. Hey. <laughs> we know how to have a good time here. Uh, thank you, Voulez vu with the one dollar ninety nine super chat. Really, really appreciate that generous support. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to move towards our, our final uh, reckoning here. Not that it's uh, you know it's all a bit uh, subjective, and I'm I'm sure we could do another episode e uh, easily has anyone got one or two more like if you if you're done with your list now that's great if anyone's got one more they really want to throw in and then we'll try and narrow down 10 guys so anyone have we already Roy, mentioned um I mean, maybe it's not the 60s but uh gillon vetiver was that 1959 or 1960 or 61 50s 50s Oh, I, I want to. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'll have to check that. We'll check that. Uh, yeah. I've, I, I think it's 1961. No, I think Let's it's uh, 56 or 59. 
I think I, I, you know uh, what? <laughs> if we're using things like Profumo or for granted, it probably has one year on one site, another year on a different site. It's not. No, no, but I, I clearly That's remember. True. It's in yeah. 1959. Yeah, right. I, cl I clearly remember it, it was in the in in the decade before uh, okay. Os Osovage. All right. Of, of, um, yeah, I'm just looking it up. I'm only <laughs> finding the 2000 re-release, which obviously did, that's not going to help me. Uh, uh, guys, if you know the answer to this one. Who says Fragrantica that? Fragrantica says 1961 and then re-release 2000, but Fragrantica is wrong a lot of the time. We don't have All to right. get into that. I mean, we don't have to get into it because we'll, we'll just say it's 1950. I'll, I'll go with Dusan. Look, and, and, and it's we'll, a great we'll honorable mention. Yeah. All right. Certainly, <laughs> certainly. In a, listen, we, whatever decade it's from, it's a fragrance that the audience would love to discover if they haven't. So a classic vetiver fragrance, kind of soapy and the essence benchmark of, of a vetiver scent in a fragrance that is very unisex and try it out, guys. Uh, the narrow, yeah, it does seem Andre Petre and Dusan Ninich both saying 59. So let's assume it was very we'll late yeah 50s. I, I believe uh, <laughs> uh, well there you go okay we, we, we've avoided too much of a, a row there over that issue thank you so much guys okay so we've got nice list of fragrances i think there's a lot that are just going to absolutely force their way in because they have to be <laughs> in um what's that one jj you got one more <laughs> of course um, i have a few more yeah, yeah this is monsieur I, I, baman monsieur baman uh, uh, was uh, released in 1964 it's it's a right. great um you know, aromatic citrus, wonderful lemon and bergamot in the top, basil, um, just very lemony, vetivery, mossy in the dry down. Um, so I wanted to just uh, give yeah. props to Monsieur Bama. Um, great stuff. Try to find a bottle like this one. This was like the, the uh, it's really hard to find older bottles, but the, the, the ones that came in these lemon yellow bottles are excellent. Ah, Monsieur Balmain. Maybe I need that one in the collection. Okay, I've got, as usual from this show, several things I now want to go and check out. Okay, let me list a few. And the panel, I think some will have a unanimous that's got to be in, and then we'll have a couple that are sort of borderline. Okay, so let me go through them, guys. And we'll see if we all say it's in, then it's in. Eau Sauvage. Yes. Be in, right? In, in number in. one. That's a yes. tick. Brute by Fabergé. In. Yeah. Kind of has to be. Rachel, you think this deserves to be in? Yeah. Very relevant. All right. This one, I liked that you brought it to the table, but it's a bit more contentious. Azure by Estee Lauder. Uh, not for a top 10, maybe a top 20. <laughs> right. Um, well, does anyone strongly disagree? No, I think that's probably about right. Okay. Habit Rouge Galan. Yes. Yes. Got to go in, hasn't it? Okay. Cap this is more borderline. Capucci Purom. Mm, I mean, if we're trying to include all 60s fragrances, that's kind of like a contender for maybe like top 20, top 30. It's a good one. I agree. Yes. Okay. I'm glad you brought it along, though, Alex. It's a good one. Okay. Uh, Jean de Spray Bal -Ever Versailles. I kind of want to say yes on that one. Yeah. 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 I think so. By reputation. I don't. I haven't tried it really, but uh, I yeah. think by reputation. I, I'm, I'm inclined. Rachel, do you want to put that one in? Yes. Let's do it. Okay, that's four so far. Because we need some more female marketed ones as well. Uh, yeah. This probably could be one. H Hermes Kalesh. Yes. Yes. I think so. I think so. So we've already got five, but yeah. there's a lot that are a bit more borderline here. Okay, uh, I suspect this one might not get in. Elisa Ashley Musk. Nah. Nah. Close, but no cigar. But yeah, okay. No, Agree. we Everybody's left the... We left out uh, Paco Rabanne Calandre. We can't put uh, Alice Ashley mask in. Yeah. True. We we could probably do another episode on this, but okay. Aramis by Aramis. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Probably has to go in there. This is a bit biased towards men's fragrances because there's more men here, I suppose, but we did cover some good female ones. Okay. I think this one will get in. Why by YSL? Yeah. It was really no, a game changer. It, it, it yeah. doesn't get nearly as, as much attention as its 70s forebears, but it was a game changer for fragrance. Agree. Okay, so we've got seven already. Thank you so much for thank you so much to Mr. Got Plenty for the generous $4.99 super chat. I really appreciate that. Thank you. The head of security and the Lord Commander of the North rate these Italian frags. Keep it, kill it, reformulate it. Tirani Teren Tiziana Terenzi, Zerzhov Bulgari. Okay, I'll try. 
Um, keep it, kill it, or reformulate it. Okay, so I, I guess I would keep... Oh, I mean, I don't really know, but I, I, I'll say I'll keep Bulgari because it's more of a historic <laughs> house. Yeah. I'm, not that I hate anything. I'd reformulate Zerzhov. I think they're okay. Mm. I don't want to kill too Terenzi, but I'm, I, I don't have much experience, so I'll, I'll, I'll bin off. I'll get rid of Tiriana Terenzi. Uh, do, Alex, any different views on that one? No, no, no. I will kill Tiziana Terenzi. Definitely not, uh, not nearly worth uh, the price. Uh, Sergio uh, uh, is a hit or miss. Uh, I would, I would humble Zerzhov. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably, that's what I would do. <laughs> probably the good ones uh, are a little overpriced for what they are, and some are not so good. Bulgari, I'll definitely keep them. Uh, they are not expensive. They are good fragrances for what uh, you pay. And yeah. Okay. Great, uh, great super chat. Thank you, Mr. Got Plenty. Uh, Hillary Dean there, no mention of high karate craziness. Yeah, great release. For, I didn't know it was from that decade, but it was, yeah, it was big in the yeah, 70s still. Uh, interesting fragrance, famous in the uh, UK and maybe the USA for the Valerie Leon uh, comical adverts that were famous there on TV. Basic Malaco with a very generous £10, $10 super chat. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much, Danilo. On the discussion of new and vintage, uh, vintage fragrances, you can apply the same principles used by John Rawls' book, A Theory of Justice, so that we give all fragrances equal chance to stimulate our senses. I love that philosophical... I love that, uh, too. And, that is and a wonderful and thought. Thank you. Basic Thank Malarco, you, Basic Malarco. I really appreciate the super chat. It's great that he helps me with my reading list. I put, I put his suggestions in my Amazon wish list. Yeah. So... Thank you very I much. I need to get better at that. Yeah, I think that's a great super chat. Really, really appreciate that generous super chat. So uh, he'll be here with us tomorrow night giving uh, his input. Uh, and it's always interesting to hear what he's got to say. Okay, we've got seven in already. Just got a few more that i got a list for you guys in. So Creed Erysia. No. Mm, Possibly no. not quite. <laughs> okay, Gerland Shamard. Oh, God. Yes. It's kind of no. like I have to say, I, I really want to <laughs> in that list. Yes, Shamard possibly going to go in then maybe one we could let's put it at number 10 and if we have to we can sub it out right, right. after we go through the rest <laughs> yeah. yeah i take it shalimar was not 60s then no that was like 1925 yeah that was the 20s sorry okay monsieur lanvan no only and only because it wasn't around long enough uh it's been discontinued for like 25 years so no fair enough uh, Jovan Wild Honeysuckle. No, no, not quite. It's We've, it sounds great though. I'm kind of interested well, in that one. We're going to have to put in something a bit contentious because we haven't we haven't actually got as many as I thought. So um, yeah, Monsieur Balman from 1964. That's We've only a, got three left to discuss. Yeah, so. I mean that's a so-so. I mean I'm just thinking like of so many 60s fragrances that I didn't have with me just because I'm still moving stuff out of storage. Yeah. So yeah, um, like right now, I'm just trying to find like a quick list of all the '60s fragrances that I have. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's come back to that one, Melagrano by Santa Maria Novello. Mm, I, I, it would be like 11 or 12. I just don't see it in the top 10 <laughs> because there's so oh, many I... others that we haven't discussed that I think belong there. Therefore, we've actually fallen short, which is the opposite we of what I thought would based happen. On based on what we chatted about i we've really got one two three four five six seven eight okay so we've got eau sauvage brute habit rouge bal avasai by jean despray kalesh hermes definitely got to be in there aramis by aramis why by why so still a good list shamard from guerlain and uh what do you reckon maybe we'll revisit this sub topic next week or something I mean, we could. I'm thinking of so many others, like you know, there's Aqua Brava, which is another one yeah. that came ah. out in the. Oh, in the... Calandra, Calandra, Calandra from ah. uh, Paco Rabanne. Right. Let's put Paco Rabanne Calandra in because Fiji, of importance. Which I importance. wanted to talk about Guy La Roche Fiji, which I didn't Ooh, have with me. Yes, yes. Fiji. Fiji belongs in the top ten. Yeah. Okay, Fiji, Fiji Guy La Roche. 
Yeah. Okay, if we put those two in, that I feel that's a more balanced list. So if we add in Paco Rabanne Calandra because of its in- in- incredible weight in the industry and, and, you know, it was around for many years, hugely popular release, a, 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 a pillar of their collection over the years. And if we add it as it add in uh, Fiji Gila Roche, what's I think the, we're getting somewhere. What's yeah. the ratio of male marketed and female that marketed? That brings it very moment. close now. Yeah. I'll give you the – so we've got Eau Sauvage men, Brutes. Habit Rouge, we've got Kalesh, we've got Aramis, we've got Y, YSL, we've got Fiji Gila Roche, we have Paco Rabanne Calandra, then we have Galan Shamard, and... And is that how many? Nine? It's, it's like half and half, but I think I've only got nine. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And do we Guerlain... need one more male and or one more female? Not that, it, not that uh, it, I'm actually muddled up. It. I'll just uh, Au Sauvage then is men. Brute is men. Habit Rouge is men. That's three. Uh, Bal of uh, Versailles is for women. Obviously, anyone can wear anything, but we just right, nominally. Just, uh, uh, Kalesh nominally is female, obviously. Uh, so we have Aramis, obviously, is for men. Y by YSL is for women. And Fiji for women. And Galan Shamad, women again. And actually, Calandra is for women too. So I think we have one, uh, one, two, three. Oh, God. Uh, we actually have four for men and six for women. But that's oh, okay. Oh, wow. We could yeah. think. We could throw another men's one in there. Why don't we throw? Hey, there's maybe there's room for uh, Monsieur Beaumont. <laughs> yeah. For. Yeah, I think there might be. Um, yeah, do you want to throw that in as an? Well, let's put Monsieur Balman in as. Uh, we'll it, had a, it, it, it had a it had a longer run of the, the trough than the other Monsieurs because the other one I have, Rochas, uh, discontinued, and also Lanvin. Monsieur Lanvin was uh, Lanvin was also um, long discontinued, and Balmain was produced until pretty recently so okay so here is our definitive list then uh for the 1960s of 10 fragrances we have old sauvage oh, it might even be five. Oh, i don't know ooh, anyway ooh, no. anuj is a detractor he says Uh-oh. no to monsieur bama maybe anuj can choose it. the 10th one. Oh yeah we so should have him choose it on this conversation yeah totally yeah. Uh, if you take that out i put i put in a chandarom Chantaron. That oh, would be a, yeah. that would be a third go on. That would be a lot of real estate for yeah. Guillaume. Oh well. Good yeah, thing. It deserves at it least kind of deserves three, or four, yeah. three or four spots in every list. Let's have a news decide. Let's see if we can quickly make a decision on a tenth one. All right, just I to will, let you I, will, I think we've got rather. ten without it though, because we've got oh, really? Sauvage. Yeah, because yeah, we had we had six. You want and me to four, write so... it? Yeah, six you write it down then. All right, I'll write them all down. Just give me the names. Okay, so we've got Eau Sauvage from Dior, Brut from Fabergé, yep. Habit Rouge from Guerlain, mm-hmm. uh, Val Av- Bal à Versailles by Jean Desprez, yep. Hermès Kalesh, yep. Aramis by Aramis, mm-hmm. YSLY, mm-hmm. Fiji uh, Guy Laroche. Wish I had the bottle. Great classic. Gerlan Shamard mm-hmm. and Paco Rabanne Calandra. Mm-hmm. And then we were going to, uh, was that 10 though, isn't it? That's 10. Yeah. And then we, because you wanted more of men's ones, because that was six to four in favor of women, we were going to put mm-hmm. Bal- Monsieur Balman One, as an honorable two, 11. Three, yeah, four. Agua, Agua Brava. One, Agua two, Brava is three. great too. Uh, what we could do is we could replace one of the marketed to woman ones with a men's one, and then it would be even. Or with an uni- unisex, for example, uh, in 1968, there was the release of the first uh, diptych, I think, uh, low. Yes, that, uh, it's, it's amazing how far that back that brand goes, yeah, which is now you uh, would be seen as unisex. You know what? I think that's still a good – I think it should be more women's because back then yeah. we had a lot more releases for women, uh, mm-hmm. and it, it was more of a – I think that's right. fine. I don't think there's a yeah, problem. Yeah, who's counting? Let's let's just keep it as I it is. I like no, it. I, I approve of it. 
<laughs> yeah, I think it's a great list. Okay, guys, so let us know what you think of that list. We will have uh, we will have more content for you next week, maybe on the 60s or maybe a new subject. You've been an amazing panel. Thank you so much to Alex the Perfume Temple, JJ Colburn, and Rachel Kate. And we hope we might see uh, one or two of you over the weekend, two for the live streams. More fun and games coming up. You've been an amazing panel, an amazing crowd. Thank you for all the comments and super chats. And as promised... I have to play out with the trailer. Probably would get my uh, super, uh, what do you call it, a copyright thing, but whatever. Uh, the original trailer then from 1968 for, I yeah, if it's on YouTube, it can't have anything that offensive. Uh, here we go then, guys. Let's see. I have no idea what this uh, entails, but this gentleman paid his super chat, and that's going to be the outro, guys. See you next time. And here it comes. Fingers crossed. Uh oh, it might work. Oh, it does work. Here we go. Myers Vixen, the story of a girl who loves the joy of being alive and gives herself innocently to the merry chase of life. But like any other game, life has its rules, and if we trespass beyond them, the game can become deadly. There is no stronger bond than the friendship between two men. Judd and Niles shared such a bond, a brotherly tie blind to color, and yet in a moment of violent passion the other to the edge of destruction both pushed by vixen her frustration nurtured by an empty lack of understanding a need she sought to fill in the arms of another woman for the vixen the giving of love is an act of nature her only weakness a cancerous evil she was taught that human beings are to be classified by the color of their skin an inner sickness that will come close to destroying not only her but those around her it will bring them to a moment of truth in an empty sky with a black man a fulcrum in the deadly teeterboard of life. The hatred inside Vixen fired by yet another, the sinister preachings of the communist puppet. Vixen, an adult motion picture experience that is rated X. The management of this theater urges you to see Russ Myers' Vixen. <laughs> the management of this well, theater guys. urges you to see... <laughs> Great. Russ Myers Vixen. The man. That was a lovely way to end. That was a nice, <laughs> it takes you back to a, a little clip of life. How life was there. Guys, thank and you I, so much. <laughs> I was just going to say, I like that there was like this, you know, sort of like, uh, you know, uh, civil We're rights. Still on kind air, of by the way. We're still on, yeah. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was no, the, you know, uh, they kind of throw that in to give a little bit of credibility to the plot. <laughs> yeah, so Very you bizarre. See, oh. How yeah. the costumes are changed, uh, how the the yeah, perception uh, of uh, of these things have changed. Uh, and that was rated uh, X in uh, in the sixties. Now we have uh, harder things that are not rated. <laughs> I mean, I know this is a, uh, yeah. a lack guys, thereof. We're, we, we're, we're still on air, so we're going to properly end this now. Thank you so much, guys. We we had a great show. We'll see you next time, everyone. End of broadcast. See you next time, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>